Welcome into Cincinnati Soccer Talk. We are glad to have you, even though it was a bit of a letdown week. I have poured myself a big glass of red wine tonight as the three of us. I've got uh, Brian and Brian with me, so prepare to be very confused. Uh, me with a glass of wine and then the two Brians. It's a bad combination. But overall, we are looking forward to breaking down this match with you. Um, I know it's two losses in a row. It's tough to be an FCC fan all of a sudden. Crazy to say. We've had worse times, but it does just seem like something's broken. So I want to talk to these two guys and figure out if it really is, whether it's time to hit that panic button. I saw someone on Reddit this week had a very clever, um, all right, I think I'm about ready to hit this with the, with the big button on the screen. And uh, and uh, are you there? I mean, I'm, I'm genuinely interested. Are you listener there? We got more emails this week at feedback at Cincinnati Soccer Talk than we're usually used to. Uh, Coach uh, got some show questions for his show. So, uh, definitely some concerns spread on our Twitter account after the game. Our three-word reviews are a little bit more pessimistic than normal. But overall, how are you feeling? Um, the one thing I think is important to keep in mind is MLS doesn't really start till the summer. Um, we've had many teams teach us that over the years. And so FC Cincinnati have time, but it, it is concerning time to get ready. Let's see what these other guys are thinking. Let's get them in here. First, I'm going to introduce Brian Biedenbach. How are you, sir? Doing well, man. Little little down from the these two losses in a row, but um, trying something new and getting the scarf out and um, you know seeing if we can change our mojo a little bit this week. You know, I heard that um, this was our first losing streak since 2022. No, that is that true? That's what I heard. That's what I read somewhere this week. First losing streak. It's only two games. Nothing to panic about. Uh, you know, but. Last one year two was years. insanely, insanely good. Like, even when we weren't winning, we were drawing. So that might be very much true. I'm going to look that up, though. That's 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 amazing. Thank yeah, you it was a stat that. I, yeah, it was a stat I couldn't couldn't really believe, but we did have a quite a streak there last year. So <laughs> You think you know a team. All right, Brian <laughs> Weigel, we'll bring you in. How are you, bud? Uh, I'd be better if Twitter would freaking work right now. Thank you, Elon Musk, for not going live right now. Appreciate you very much. I call it Twitter till it can actually work. <laughs> oh yeah, doing well on a on a great Monday. I was on the road most of the day. Uh, so yeah, uh, just uh, I don't know, man. It, it's it's at least I'm not in Canada. Thank God. So whatever. <laughs> Were you thinking about going? Yeah, I would love to go uh, to to Montreal. It's a, a great city. Jack Stern raves about it all the time, but uh, you know, it's one of those one of my bucket list cities for uh, for seeing an FC Cincinnati game. But uh, maybe when it's in like June versus uh, April, but cold and rainy. Yeah, yeah. The Canadian teams are on my list every year. I think it's going to be the year. Um, this year I haven't traveled yet, which is very strange for me. I need to get on top of it. Uh, real quick though, before we get the show started, we want to give a big shout out to Apollo home. Uh, April showers are in full effect. No kidding. I found it hard to even, uh, mow my lawn recently. If you need any assistance with sump pumps or downspout drainage, give Apollo home a call. If you didn't know, they have plumbing excavation department that can help you with properly installing downspout yard drainage. Give them a call or book online at Apollo home. Dot com. We have a lot of best and worst to get into this week. Uh, throw them on the chat if you would like to. As Brian said, somehow our Twitter is disabled. I apologize if you're listening to this podcast and you normally watch us live on Twitter. Our bad. We'll figure out what's going on there. You still have Facebook and YouTube that we're live on right now. Brian Biedenbach, we'll start with you. Yeah, man. Um, uh, Kubo, man, is my best. He's two for two up top uh, as a starting striker. Um you know, we have questions of him up there, but we've got questions of everybody up top this year. And uh, we're missing, you know, I think later on we'll talk about the spark off the bench that he always brought that I think we're missing with him up there, but he's at least putting the ball in the net and no one else is doing that. So um, he, I got to give my best to him this week. Um, my worst, and I know we'll talk about this later on, like this was a thing that drove me absolutely bonkers this week is that we were attacking with nine players. Obviously, obviously, Khan's not getting involved in the attack, but we were missing our DP, our striker, Bupenza. He was, he was there. 
but <laughs> nobody was looking for him. And that it was that is a problem. Um, you know, I've been critical of him. Again, we'll talk later in the show about this, but I've been really critical of Bupenza. But it was to me, it looked like the team gave up on him this last week. When he was in good positions, they didn't even look his direction. So I was really frustrated with that. That's my absolute worst this week. All right. Appreciate your thoughts there. <laughs> you remind me of something we'll talk about a little bit. Uh Brian, best and worst. Uh, I think some tactical changes that we made uh, in the the beginning of the second half with Kubo actually pressing a little bit more because kind of what Brian said, Bupenza was not existent, not doing all the dirty work, not trying to help our defense get turnovers, win the ball back like Montreal was doing. And, uh, you know, to to Brian's point, I think Boop was my worst. And and I, I don't put it all on him, but when you're not doing some of the necessary work to, to get your chances, I mean, God, I, I wouldn't want to pass the ball to you either. Um, other than that, I, I just so much disappointment how two weeks on, I was on the show saying, you know, I felt pretty good. Um, we're still getting the ball in the final third. We do need to get the ball in the penalty box a little bit more, you know, taking my time and saying, hey, you know, I, I think we can work this out. And there's very little right now that makes me think we're going to to work this out. And that, that kind of scares me versus two weeks ago. Um, still think that there's a lot of things up in the air that's not allowing the club to be as best as they could be. I still think Kubo is a bench player, not a starter, uh, contrary to his two goals that we've seen. But uh, I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. Mr. Yates commenting on uh, Facebook said, I like that Boston not only wore a jersey this week, but finally picked the holy grail of FCC jerseys with the orange top. <laughs> yes. USL. J- Jay, I have heard your complaints in the last two weeks about the reason we're losing <laughs> is because I keep wearing just random non-FCC related clothes. And you know what? We've lost two in a row. I felt like it's probably superstitious. But if I'm the reason, then I'm going to fix it this week. And so if we lose again, I just want it. I want this off my conscience. You, I can't sleep at night now because you <laughs> continuously berate me in the comments about it. And uh, I hope we, I hope this solves it. If this is a problem, I hope it solves it. All right, let's get into your best and worst. Clifford says the best is Kubo. Worst, still haven't found what we're looking for. 100% agree with that, uh, that take. Uh, Rupesh, Kubo as well was his best. Defense looks shaky. Yeah. We keep talking about how great they are, and yet we started to allow goals getting a little leaky back there, so uh, not too bad. Jose, I appreciate you tuning in. He said he's uh, not able to comment as much as normal tonight, but um, we'll say the worst was the back line as well. So we appreciate those takes. I think uh, my, my best and worst kind of revolve around the same guy. You mentioned him. Uh, the chats mentioned him. Yuyo Kubo is our answer up top. We have benched the guys we brought in during the offseason, the guys we've re-signed because they have, uh, at least to this point in the season, been a failure. So we bring in Kubo, which wouldn't be so bad. But Pat Noonan, in an interview this week with, I think, Laurel, says that Kubo is not good enough to start at any position, and that's why he's been moved all over the field. So our starting striker is now a guy that's not good enough to start at any position. And when I read that, I was just disheartened. I was like, oh, my Mm -hmm. gosh. This is the only guy scoring goals for us. And Pat Noonan doesn't think he's the guy. He's correct. We're in bad (laughs) shape if all that's true. (laughs) I mean, it definitely seems like there's some frustration um, potentially with the front office on not giving our uh, our chef all the ingredients to cook um, <laughs> or some of the ingredients are maybe a little overripe or however you want to say it. But I think you it's kind of what I mentioned in my best and worst. I, I love you, Kubo. I don't know where we would be without him right now. Uh, we're still fifth place in the table, so let's all keep that in mind. However, I think I think Pat's right. Uh, I, I don't think he's exceptional. I don't. I mean, maybe he will be a, a, a potent goal scorer for us, but he's he doesn't fit that that hold up striker that I think we kind of need right now. Maybe another um, another t- player profile. I, I'm not sure he really fits anything that's extra special out there that we don't currently have, except you know 
Him and Corey Baird are similar, but Corey Baird can only either miss the goal or hit it right at the, the goalkeeper for some unknown reason right now. <laughs> um, but I, I think to the point, and I've said this all last year and beginning of this year, we don't have that person to bring off the bench. And Yuyo Kubo is the James Posey best, best six man and, and you know one of the best six men in NBA history. That first guy you bring off the bench, that's a that dynamic player that not many teams can bring off the bench. And while he's starting right now, while he might be better than than Corey Baird at the moment, I think that hurts us dramatically over the last 30 minutes of the game when we're trying to chase a goal. And that that's where, like, last year, I would love to see the stat. I, this is just eyeball test. I felt like we were a lot closer in a lot of matches in the first half. And where we broke away was that second half when we were able to make those changes the other teams weren't. And that dy- that lack of dynamicism, dynamicism whatever, Um it is hurting the team now. Thank God for um, for Dotto, but um, yeah. And I, you know, I was going to bring him up too. I think Kubo did bring that spark last year, but Kubo is the only one that's putting the ball in the net this year. I think the guys what played six or seven different positions in yeah. seven matches like this that, season. So I think give him give him some time up there. He's started twice and he scored two goals already. You know, a few weeks ago, I was really harping on the straight line runs that our forwards were making. And already we see him making some different runs, some diagonal runs, some movement that Lucho's finding because maybe he's not looking for anybody else uh, up there that's partnered with Kubo potentially. Um, But I think Dotto has the ability to bring that spark off the bench and we're bringing him in with eight minutes left in a match. Listen, then. Yeah, it's... uh, you know, I don't know what Noonan sees or doesn't see in him, but I've been impressed with him off the bench. I wasn't so much impressed with Dotto as a starter when he was in that 10 position earlier in the season. But, but man, coming off the bench, I do think he brings some creativity. He's smooth on the ball, and he's got vision. Uh, maybe he can be that guy. I think, at least from where I'm sitting, Kubo is at least, and I and I said this to you guys after he scored in the last match, he's at least trying to move forward, bringing some creativity. The only reason Kubo scored a goal in that match is because he made a run Acosta was looking for. Acosta's looking for guys that will take the chances, make the darts and runs, and make the little playoff balls. And when you're Corey Baird and you just stand in the same place for God knows how long, Lucho's not looking for that. He wants someone who's going to show some promise. I will say, overall, when Corey came in, um, the offsides went through the roof. <laughs> if, you, if you guys didn't notice, we uh, we have an offside problem, and I don't know. Do you think it's rushing to try to come back from behind, or or are we just that desperate to score that we're hoping the refs miss the fact that our guys are two feet off. I don't know. How do, how do we solve this? I, you know, it, it may be rushing. It may be uh, just lazy tracking back. Uh, maybe that's one, one issue. But if you watch that match again, if you go back when Corey Baird came in, we were at least passing him the ball. I think he got the ball three times in the first five or six minutes that he was in, which is more than I think Bupenza intentionally received a pass all match. I think there's a problem there, and I'll I'll keep talking about that. But um, yeah, I think Baird was not watching that line. Maybe it's laziness getting back, but at least our guys are looking for him up top. Uh, The offside trap you're talking about? Oh, and Baird got caught off by a foot and a half on his no goal. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's something to to be there as well with uh, the timing of, of some of our guys, um, you know, holding on to the ball. I think Yedlin was it Yedlin that made that pass on that ball. Uh, it's holding on to it just for a second now, too long. Or was that a cost? I can't remember. No, it was Orishano. Or, 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 oh, you said yes. it right. Orishano. <laughs> so proud of you, Boston. Golly. God Here's bless you. It's a new day. A new yeah, day. It was him coming off that left side, I think. Uh, but, you know, I rewatched that play again, and there was a, a defender in his face that he had to touch the ball around. So maybe he couldn't play that ball half a step sooner. I don't know. 
I mean, we're taking chances. I, there's a lot more things I could be upset about, like right. uh, the acres of space we allow in front of our back three. <laughs> Uh, not able to touch a ball in the midfield, so whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll take our guys being a little aggressive. We're now, the lazy. The, you did say something earlier about like Bupenza not checking back in time. That's mm-hmm. definitely something. Um, there was a comment though, Coach Noonan had in his presser this week, and you're gonna have to to, to listen to Coach uh, Goff's uh, Justin Hoyt's talking tactics. But Noonan said that our guys were making decisions too fast or playing too fast in the box. I can't remember what the exact comment was, but it was equivalent of, oh, we're just playing way too fast in the, in the final third. And I'm, I'm like, are we watching the same game? Like, I feel like we're like getting the ball forward and then it's like screech breaks. And yeah, I mean, I know there's a point where Orshano like, you know, booted the ball halfway up to heaven uh, in the first five minutes, uh, taking a shot, a ridiculous shot. But, I mean, if we do get the ball, it's 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 like ants going forward, and we're not really even, like we're moving so slow. We're letting the other team set up, paying so many negative or lateral passes that we're not able to get the ball in the dangerous areas. And that's what like I heard that from Coach Noonan. I'm like, he's normally pretty spot on. I, I kind of want to hear Coach's take on it, but I was as a head scratcher to me. Like that's what concerns me more than being offside. Yeah, uh, well, here's part of it, but yeah. Well, here's, here's what I think is most interesting. We heard it at the top of the show, and I, I kind of asked for everybody's best and worst uh, uh, that's paying attention and listening to the show right now because I wanted to see where everybody felt uh, like the problem was. Like, is it in the back? Which now we now have people saying, hey, the back line's not holding up. And we have people saying, hey, do you have a problem in the forwards? And to me, to me, the biggest problem's in the midfield. So every element of this team is a little bit under attack. And so uh, I kind of want to know where you guys stand, uh, which wh- where, where's the problem area of FC Cincinnati. If you had to pick a third, Oh man, we weren't good in any third this last week. I think that was, that was a problem. I, oh man, do we go as far as saying we miss junior Moreno? Yes, his, his holding no, position. That, yes, this blows my mind, Brian. Blows my mind. I did not think I would miss Junior Moreno. I was excited, uh, Pavel Buka and his consistency and his passing because that's what Jun- Junior Moreno had. He was more attacking minded, and he certainly is. But I think we're missing that holding player. I think the more I think about it with Moreno there, it frees Obi up to be Obi. And uh-huh. now we're seeing too much space. Like that you said, safety Brian, in blanket's front of those. gone. Yeah. Yeah. We're missing the, maybe we'll talk about this later too. We're missing the recovery speed of Mosquera back there. Um, there, I think we're missing a lot in the central midfield that we've got the players, but I don't think they're playing the roles that we saw the, uh, the guys playing last year. I think there might be something to say with Obi still not being completely fit. Um, you saw you, no you saw that on that uh, on the second goal. He just he didn't track his guy and he switched off for half a second. And again, I didn't see the full shot, but I mean, you don't normally see that that coming out of Obi giving up some of that extra space. But yeah, I mean, that's something that Junior Moreno would see a mile away, and, and Buka is trying to get forward and, tra- and trying to create some opportunities. Uh, that's, that's a trade off you're going to get. You hope that yeah. the back three. Would hold and it does hold 98% of the time. Um, yeah. And you know, at the same time, though, we are missing that. I still think if we could hold the ball up top, we've got guys, yeah. Justin says it in the in the comments here, attacking third, still the worst. We have no line breakers. Uh, I do think that's a problem. If we could hold the ball in the attacking third and get our midfielders back in position in transition, I think maybe, you know, referencing, uh, I didn't hear Noonan's comments about passing too quickly and making decisions too quickly in the final third. I took it as the transition game. Like we do transition quickly, but we don't have the, the holding player up top. If we transition and run into trouble, we try and dribble out of it or we make a bad pass back to somebody and now they're transitioning, transitioning backwards. So I still think with much issues as we have as our central midfielders, I do think we have a huge problem up top and you told us to pick a third Boston. I don't know if I can pick between those two. It's, it's, it's tough, but (laughs) 
I am not ready to throw Miazga and Robinson and company under the bus. I'm just not. I, I think that when they when you when they see as much of the ball as they are, I don't care that you play for the United States men's national team. The entire game is played in your your third. Mm-hmm. And 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 you're you're moving forward thinking like, hey, I might be able to um help the offense out here in case things get frisky up there. And then boom, there's a midfield turnover, and all of a sudden, <laughs> time after time again, you are tracking back. To save out, to, to bail out your goalkeeper, which by the way is not a starter. So <laughs> it's just it's just a tough situation to be in overall. Um, I love Joseph's comment here. M- Mourinho and Arias were huge uh, mistakes. I think he means to let go. Also, why do we sign players to long term deals and just let them leave because they want to at the expense of our entire success? Joseph, the un fair answer to that question is because we don't really have a choice. If we hold players hostage, we're the team that holds them hostage and then we don't get the next player. So it, it's talking about Cincinnati is a world worldly known destination. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> it stinks. And I hate it too, because yeah, I would love to take a Barial and make him play here another year and tell him you're too dang bad. You don't get a choice, but uh, I don't think FC Cincinnati is just in that position. And also MLS teams will usually take the four plus million dollars when they can get it. So that's just the tough. That's the, I mean, that's a tough situation to answer your question. Honestly. Yeah. All right. Can I, can I read a couple stats Yeah. to you guys? And I, these stats don't, they, they didn't pass the eye test for me, but I was shocked when I saw this passing percentage because we could not hold on to the ball the entire first half. We have Miazga passing the ball straight out of bounds, thinking we had a winger there and no one was there. Passing percentage, guys that had the ball through the midfield. We have um, Buka at 93.6% passing. We have Hagland, didn't, he wasn't in long, um, at 91. We have um, Miazga at 82, Ian Murphy at 90, Obi at 85. I didn't see that accuracy this week. I so, was shocked to see that. So the thing you're missing is where those passes were going and how many negative or lateral passes we had. I, I, I need to bring that up too, but it, it was, I mean, how many times did our midfield, even when they had it, kill a kill a, an offensive opportunity? That's why I was kind of mm-hmm. like scratching my head with Noonan's comments is we just pulled the ball back and tried to cycle it around. It was driving me nuts. Yeah, no, I even I think even with the the negative passing, I I was shocked that we connected that many times. We had balls played across the middle. Um, <laughs> Bupens is at fifty six percent passing. There that you doesn't go. Surprise anybody? That felt like the rest of the team to me this week. So, oh. all was. right. So, Kubo obviously scored. I'm going to get us back on on track here. Kubo obviously scored in the match. Our only score. We level it for. Well, it felt like maybe a minute <laughs> before, <laughs> before I got clawed back. Um, let's talk a little bit about those flaws on the defensive line um, that led to the first goal. What went horribly wrong for FC Cincinnati really to kick it off? Because it, it, the announcers just rubbed it in on it, the salt in the wounds by telling us that, oh, this is the first time FC Cincinnati has not had a lead at the half or <laughs> been tied at the half. So, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Um Defensive breakdown or midfield breakdown? What are you talking Good. about? Talking <laughs> the first, first goal. goal oh, first goal, goal. Sorry. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think all of the above, <laughs> right? Ball when played you, back to the top of the box. When you leave Joseph Martinez open, yeah. Um, I think there's there's a problem there. Worst injury ever, by the way. Guy gets hurt and they bring the ringer off the bench. <laughs> he, Joseph Martinez scored. And I said, "Of course, the the injury substitute comes in and makes the impact, <laughs> and then subs out later in the game." That was that was odd. Well, but why not? He's already done his right. job. I That's guess. That's true. Yeah, he. I mean, he he's always caused us a couple headaches. It's funny, you know. He, he Martinez has had a decline overall in Major League Soccer, but it hasn't seem to happen against FC Cincinnati quite yet. We made him look good. We did make him look pretty good. Um, 
Well, Brian, Brian, what do you what do you what are you saying here about uh, Obi? The close rate of Obi leads to second. Oh my God! You can't get me up here. Slow. <laughs> oh, that's the second goal. I say the hmm. the second goal. How that uh, how he didn't close down that or follow his run uh, for that second for that second goal. Is, is um, it kind of going through the midfield? Does he play more timid on a yellow card now? I remember being worried just, about him. I just don't year. think he's reading the game. I don't think he's reading the game game well. I think he's flailing a little bit. I don't think his fitness is is up where it needs to be. Um, I mean, you just see him, you know, making some challenges that he's a half, half a hair late on, or you know, those fifty fifty balls when they're shoulder to shoulder, he's losing out on. Um, I I'm not saying he's crap or anything. I'm just saying he I just it doesn't look like he's right to me, and uh, that kind of scares me a little bit. Um, the one thing I know we're I don't know, Brad or somebody said something about it, it was like a formation change because we almost need like another body in that midfield right now. I don't think we're set up for it necessarily across the back line and uh, you know who do you play on the wings and forward and everything. But I mean, we're just not, not effective in, in, in limiting chances through the midfield. People are passing right through them like Swiss cheese and, and they're on the break and it's putting our defenders on their back foot. Uh, of course, it didn't help when you know, Matt Miazga is passing right to the other team. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I just feel like the midfield's really um, <clears throat> not not fully there yet, not fully baked out. And, and of course, with Buka, he uh, – what? how long How long have – how many games have we played? Like eight games. And Buka and, and Obi didn't get to play through a large part of those so far. So that relationship is still kind of flushing out. Um, am I muted? Oh, you know, I'm not. Okay. Justin Blair saying, um, did Pinto retire? No, I think he actually got a, got a, a knock if I remember right. Uh, it, is, it is strange that, um, Pat Noon hasn't put Pinto in a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to look up, I'm going to look into that for you, Justin, see if I can figure out the answer. The, we know FC Cincinnati's been hot on the market for a new forward probably because they just don't see the answer um, early in the season. They are struggling to get goals and the defense was holding. Now I kind of wonder if they should focus a little bit more on fixing problems in the midfield than, than up, up top. I mean, that sounds crazy to say, but I still think we have Bupenza. I still think we have Acosta. Um, if we can get the ball up there for more opportunities, for more chances, it, it, it's kind of where my head is. I'm more concerned that the midfield cannot get that ball going forward than I am anything. Some of that might be a little bit on the defense, you know, Miaz getting them getting it forward. But it just seems to me like when we do get the th- when, when we do get the ball in the mid, we're going backwards. We, we we get it past the midfield line, and immediately everybody's turning around and running the opposite direction. I just don't know without a formation change how you would reshape that midfield right now um because it, you go to 433 to add another body there and a we don't have i guess kubo would be that player then who would you play up top who would you play as a left back we're not res- necessarily built for that right now i think you have to roll with with what you have in the midfield and address it with your wing backs going going appropriately U- utilizing deandre edlin a little bit more i feel like he's been criminally underused but also i'm not sure he has anybody to work the ball into in the front with boop not being a, a header guy and um i mean you do see moments of brilliance out of edlin i just we you know we're so heavily dependent on on barrio last year we we're trying to get orshano to be to be barrio again up the left we just want to keep having that left side go up. I mean, I, I don't know how many times we saw it during the, during the match where uh, Luca would dip inside and then all of a sudden be Lucho out on the left flank solo. And I feel like we, we died a lot out there. Um, I mean, yes, you know, to your point with the midfield, not playing the ball faster and, and negative passes. I, I, I just think we're, integrating those wingbacks a little bit more to get another body into the attack or into possession would help maybe a little bit more. So Luca is not Barial, not even close. I'll give you that. But Yedlin is still, still early. And he's, he's, he's a left winger or right winger playing left wing back. So let's, 
temper expectation. Like I, I heard a lot of this stuff about like let's put Halsey in. Like no, no. Like you still see, you still see a lot of positivity with Luca. Don't get me wrong, but it's some of his decision making that yeah. I. I what think I, it still needs to be flushed out. Well, my, my point is I still think you have a fairly like for like because um, you have a vastly better, in my opinion. In fact, the only optimistic thing, you, you mentioned it, on the right side is Yedlin. Yedlin is the only optimistic thing going on in the attack right now. And Yedlin. Kubo, hey, Kubo, watch it, watch it, <laughs> watch it. Yedlin is basically our new Barial, just on the opposite side. Who never gets the ball? Uh, <laughs> I had to. I, lo- I love Boston's comments. <laughs> I still think we should be fine. I think we should be fine for a Barrial for Yedlin trade. I just, if everything was going, if the midfield was going smoothly, oh, I think that's where we should be. Yeah, I had a different player in mind. Uh, sorry, I had to bow out there for a little bit. There's somebody at my door. My dogs were going crazy. I had to <laughs> mute my mic and couldn't join in the conversation. But I think Yedlin definitely is is bringing something to the right side. We're attacking more down the right side. But, you know, I had flashbacks of, I, they're not the same player, so please forgive me, but I had flashbacks of Joe Jow. We had speed, we could get by guys, but service into the box is, he struggles with, I think, putting putting balls to our strikers. Maybe they're not in the right place either. I don't know. Um, so I'm not equating Yedlin with Joe Jow. But, man, the service into the box could be better. He does get up there. Um, but going back to the midfield conversation that I missed out on, I just think the we need that holding player that we had in Moreno. I think we've got guys that want to go forward. It opens up space. Um, Buka is handling the ball, but I think it's, man, it's just opening up too much space for Obi to cover. And I think maybe Obi not being fully healthy and Obi – having to cover more space, more ground this year. We're seeing him just a little bit late. So, Or, or maybe Obi just needs to stop being Obi and maybe remake himself a little bit, a little bit more reserved holding role. Potentially. No, I don't know. I don't somebody, know. Needs, somebody needs Somebody's to be that guy. do it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think you're going to un obi Obi. That's like That seems like the hardest thing to change on this. Can team. we get T-shirts that says Obify? <laughs> please there's just no way by the way when you mentioned joe jow i saw brian's eyes light up you know that uh, <laughs> i love joe jow he, he had so much hope and potential and my optimism I, my dude. brian tricked me when we signed joe jow i thought we had a whole new team i thought we were gonna win MLS i thought Cup. caleb stank it was gonna be awesome too <laughs> <laughs> joe jow could beat anybody put the ball past anybody and just run by him but it <laughs> always went off that End line. <laughs> know who I miss? Darren Maddox. <laughs> no, you, no, you don't. You do not. <laughs> oh. Another hey, guy is... that could get in open spaces and never put the ball in the net. Well, I wasn't planning on diving into goalkeeper talk, but James on YouTube has <laughs> is, is brought in a nice uh, little bit. We've seen two goalkeepers sub for Roman Celentano thus far. We lost both games. Uh, Evan and Alec Kahn both have gotten their shot back in the starting lineup. Uh, thanks for that question, James. He asks, who looked better? Who who do you want to be your um, number two, your, your Celentano replacement if he can't be in this week? Man. I don't know. I haven't seen, is it Loro, LaRue, Loro? Um, I haven't seen enough of him. I don't know. I think Khan, I've seen him in more games. I think I would go with him. But I, again, that's just based on seeing him play more games last season. It doesn't matter to me as long as, well, no, that's not true. Uh, I was I would probably be out more on the Evan Laro train uh, after the PK save, but after his uh, goal that he actually let in off of his hands, I think Alec. Uh, I'm not sure Alec could have done really anything with uh, the shots that went in today. No, and, and and to be honest with you, Alec had uh, plenty of saves in this match. Mm-hmm. I think he did a decent job of doing what he could. Uh, Martinez strike. I don't know if uh, Vermeer. <laughs> 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 Kenneth Vermeer. That's not even funny, Clever. I laugh. Who's, who's the funny. guy? Who's the guy in St. Louis now? Um, we had for like three years. Oh, I don't know. 
All I know is Spencer Ritchie in Chicago. That's all. Oh, that's the only boy. guy I follow. Yeah. I, I don't know. Some... I, I think we'll be fine. Um, you know, with with all this stuff, and I kind of want to talk about some of the new MLS stuff. Um, I think we'll flush it out. Um, this, if I was coach, oh hell, I don't even know if I was if I was Albright telling Noonan like, hey man, like, let's just take a chill pill. Um, with all this, like, I know we want to chase points. I know we want to be at the top of the table, but you know, let's let's figure this out. Let's. You know, we have a lot of money invested in 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 Corey Baird. I know that's a thing, but uh, you know, let, let's let's figure this out. Like I, at the end of at the end of last match, I was like, man, if I was a coach, I'd be benching Boop and sending a message to everybody. But I think right now we just kind of have to give ourselves a little bit more, say, calm confidence. Maybe uh, it's going to be a tough game this weekend versus Atlanta. It's good on turf. They're a good team. They're gonna play fast. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like I, I just want to be starting to build confidence in this team. Like, I, I, have has anybody ever seen like Pat Noonan on the sidelines lately? How pissed off he looks! It's like hilarious to watch. He just looks like a grouch. You can now, hear him like, all game. Thirty screaming. Yeah, it's thirty degrees, rainy, and and everything. But I think right now it's everyone wants to jump off, uh, you know, the bandwagon. But we're still in fifth place, and I know. That it's cliche to say, oh, it only it only matters if you're peaking. And I know we need to be in the right spot on the table to to make a playoff run. But there's a lot of time left, and I, I, we have we still have a ton of talent on this team. I know we've had some you know guys playing a little bit neg- negatively, but um, as we'll talk about here, we're going to have some levers to pull this summer. At least I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, I want to dive into that and ask you uh, one more question before we get into that. But first, I'm going to give a shout out to Beyond Exercise, our second half sponsor of this show and a longtime sponsor. They've been a lo- local physical therapy and fitness business in Cincinnati that helps everyone get active and stay active. They've helped Nick Hagland and Brandon Vasquez with their physical therapy and strength training during the off season. You know, when these guys are not at the FC Cincinnati training facility, they're at beyond. And so ask the fellows there about their ACL injury prevention screen, which was piloted with Nick and Brandon. Learn more at gobeyondexercise.com. And thank you for your support of Cincinnati soccer talk. All right. I, I you, you mentioned Noonan, Brian, and I want to touch on this. Do you believe and I know it's two games. I almost feel stupid and silly for asking this, but I just kind of want to put it on, put all three of us on the record. Do we believe Noonan can fix this, this roster? Let's just pretend that not a single thing changes. <laughs> can Noonan fix this roster as it stands today? Is he a good enough coach? Does he just need time? Can we get Boop and Acosta to work together? Can all the problems be solved or do we have to have help? Uh, I mean, I think, yes, we have to have help. I mean, who do you um, believe in here, Albright or Noonan? That's what I'm asking you, really. I'm not drawing that line in the scene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. He Boston said he wants to get the three of us on record, but I think he is <laughs> asking the question and bowing out. <laughs> I'll give you my opinion. <laughs> I, I, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to be said, like, yeah, uh, all the offense has been uh, brought in by Nykamp and all the defense and everything else has been, been brought in by Albright. I, I, I mean, at the end of the day, the track record for Noonan says we'll be all right. So I, I still feel fine. Um, and, and I think we all knew kind of what we had. Um, there's still a lot of guys that are new to this whole system. And I mean, as long as I... I I, I just don't want us to abandon what we're trying to build. Um, you know, whether it's a formation change, but um if you know, if we're in three, four weeks and we're oh and three, okay. There might be some torch lighting. Okay, Brian doesn't take the bait. What about you, Brian? No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I I I have faith that Noonan can fix this, but I do think there is a problem in the locker room. And I think you see it, you're beginning to see it on the the pitch. Um, we talked last year. I, I've i never been a huge Bupenza fan, but he was producing at the end of last season. Brian, I think you always had numbers that he was contributing a goal oh, yeah. every 89 minutes yeah. or whatever, right? He's killing it, yeah. He was killing it. 
we saw arguments between he and Lucho, but they were still working together. I've seen Lucho pass the ball less to Bupenza in the last two games, less and less. Um, one of the things that made Lucho MVP last season was his vision. I don't think it's that he's not seeing an open player making a run. I think he refuses to look in his direction. Um, I really do. I think there was an exchange between, there are several exchanges between the two of them. I rewatched part of the match and um, caught one that I missed where they were actually having a conversation, but there was a couple times where one was trying to talk to the other and they just flipped their arms up and walked away and wouldn't wouldn't talk. I think there's a big problem there. I think Noonan can fix it. I don't know what it's going to take. Maybe it's benching one or the I don't know. I don't want to see that. Um, but I do think that's a problem up top that um, it's not the only problem this team has, but certainly a big one that I think is limiting the number of chances and the number of opportunities we get on goal. I see a lot of uh, you guys chatting and saying, give it time. We'll get there. Guys, you're being too hard too early. And I, I understand. I get the points you're making. I get what you're saying uh, and, and calming us down. But also, I don't think it's crazy to demand a high level of success from a team that just won the supporter shield and still has a bunch of those players on the roster losing two in a row. Should, should I roll over and accept that as normal when it didn't happen last year? Like, should I just, ex I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be the guy that says it's all fine. It's all okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we can lose three in a row, four in a row. We're still FC Cincinnati. We'll make the playoffs. A lot of teams make the playoffs. That seems like what the other teams did last year. And uh, I don't want to be that. I want to. I don't know. I just want to be a top four team. I want to be a top four team, and I don't we're want fifth. to. <laughs> <laughs> we're fifth now. But what? Yeah, with, with, a better, ago, with a better ago. points per, with a we have like the exact same points per game as Miami does, and they're in first. Uh, <laughs> fill up that red wine bottle, buddy, or your glass. <laughs> I think I think it's oh, okay. Take a chill pill. I think it's okay to be a we little can't, bit bummed. We can't we lose three in a row. row. We can't losing three in a row. Well, yeah, Monday. Oh. Yeah, when you're gone, I'm going to host Monday. <laughs> God, I don't want to be the fan base that's we'll okay with losing. That I'm sorry. I've I just got used to some success, and I wanted to breed and grow and continue. And, and that's a funny thing too, right? I still think we have the pieces to do it. I just think they're not getting along. They're not working together. If Noonan can fix that. Whatever's happening to me behind the scenes is a bigger issue because it's happening. It's showing up on the field. And I know last year we talked about guys argue on the pitch all the time. I get it. But when they're not even looking at each other to pass the ball, that's, you know, what it reminds me of is you go out when you're a kid and you got the new kid that nobody knows and everybody just avoids him because they don't know what he brings. That's what it felt like um, this last week. And I, I keep harping on that. I'll shut up. But it just felt like he was just ignored and there's a problem. Well, there I did. I can't remember what it was. Uh, there was an attacking moment and I put it on our slack. I said, Lucho has to see hmm. boop there. Like so, mm -hmm. to your point, I, I do think that there's definitely something that could have, could be better. It could be better. I, I know this is a, we'd go live on Monday nights and it wouldn't matter for after this, but I had some screenshots I was going to share. Like I went through the game and just looked at the times that Boop was open and nobody saw him. Um, and it was, I don't know, six, seven times. It wouldn't matter on the show, but it happened. <laughs> no, I think it matters. Like <laughs> there's only three of us. This, you get, you get to run, you get to run a third of the show. <laughs> you want to harp on it. Let's harp on it. But, uh, I know I know what you're talking about. It, of all the moments we need to shine, we we we're not in a position to have spats and, and, and feuds. Uh, last year, last year we barely mentioned it on the show when Acosta and Boop had their little blip because we still had Bav Vasquez. We still had mm -hmm. something that was working. Okay, so if Acosta doesn't give Boop the ball, we still have Brandon scoring. We still have Acosta scoring. We have a Barrial scoring. Who cares? Uh, we're, we're not, we don't have those luxuries this year. Everybody has to be a team player at this point. Um, I will say though, when Orishano, <laughs> when he gets going, I think we're going to have something special in that kid. When his, I think when his decision-making catches up with his speed and his ability on the ball, um, 
he's what he's rocked the crossbar several times already. I think we're gonna have something special in him. Well, there's the natural chemistry with him and Lucho. We we saw early on when they first got going. I hope so. And that might be what sparks this team. You know, if people have to worry about him on that side, that then that gives Yedlin an opportunity on the others as well. Yeah. As it's, success leads to success, I think. All right, Brian, you wanted to dive into the roster valuation. I've delayed it long enough. Yes, probably, you have. You're probably like over there. <laughs> and yeah. I am. I'm, I'm, I have my arms crossed here. <laughs> all right, I don't. On you trying to transition. I don't even know if we have time people. to dive into all the stuff you want to dive into. So I'm going to give you first dibs. What do you want to talk about first? Going to make me wait till next week when he's gone to talk about it all. <laughs> What a guy. Oh, uh, no. Um, I was going to say my best of the week was, hey, our owners are actually getting off their sweet tuckuses and trying to <laughs> improve the league. <laughs> but then uh, the Athletic wrote a story out, uh, and I think Tom Bogart released an update today saying, like, all the soccer executives are like, really, this isn't going to do crazy. So three things, maybe a fourth coming along the pipe this summer with – um several off the record comments saying that they hope for a more substantial change this off season. Yeah. We haven't heard that before. Um, so as of right now in silly MLS roster, uh, machinations, uh, your designated player spots, uh, are tied to your U 22 spots. So real quick, if you're listening for the first time, designated players, max salary contract player, um, they, you have different versions of your designated players. You have guys that can make up to like a max budget charge uh, up to a certain threshold. And then you have guys that can make like 4 million bucks or more. Those are called like senior DPs. Uh, then you have uh, you uh, young DPs who are like U23 players um, and it varying scales of how it hits your cap. So right now, if you have, three players that are above a certain age with certain um, financial hits on your cap. You only can have one U22 player. And that's a, a player where you can basically spend as much as you want to bring them in and they can hit the cap at, you know, 2 million bucks or whatever. So as of right now, this summer, if this all passes, I think they need the MLSPA to sign off. Uh, they would allow three senior designated players. So imagine this with, uh, Lucho Costa, Bupenza, and um, and Obi. That's our three DPs right now. We have one U22 player with uh, Luca or Shano. Uh, that could change to three U22 players, so we could, in theory, bring in two new players at substantially minimal budget hits if we want to go pay out the wazoo for guys to come in. We've seen repeatedly that that doesn't necessarily breed success. We spent $4 million bucks on Isaac Otaga. We spent a bunch of money on... Um, there's a guy we just loaned out, Marco Angulo, and uh, probably won't yeah. get any money back. Yeah. So that's a change. You're going to, you know, FCC could bring in two U22 players, or there's a new mechanism where you could bring in, if you have two designated players, you could have four U22 players and an additional two million in general allocation money, which would be the equivalent of either bringing in a designated player and buying his cap charge down to minimal, or you could bring in approximately like two Matt Miazga type players, you know, two high profile, nearly max budget players um, and buy down their cap hits uh, substantially. So there's multiple ways. Again, a lot of MLS soccer executives are are talking about the sarcasm, you know, basically being a little sarcastic about the U22 and the impact that those players can have. Uh, but if you're like Miami can spend, you know, 20 million bucks on U22s, it's a little bit different than MLS uh, general teams spending like 2 million or 4 million bucks on, on some of those players for transfer fees. Real quick question for you. Does the U22 spot handicap a team? Because you can't go too many years into the future, right? Because at the moment they turn 23, 24, aren't you it's in their trouble? First, it's their first contract, I believe. So okay, so if you sign them at 22, yeah. you're fine. This is why I need Ken Hedger. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, so here's the thing is with some of these guys, I mean, the, the track record for these U22s is is very sketch. It's very hit or miss, um, mostly miss. And, I mean, just look at FC Cincinnati. So FC Cincinnati has, the, the, has a li limited, very limited uh, salary budget to bring in uh, players for this summer. Now we have a little bit more flexibility with, with these additional U22 spots, but 
are these guys going to be guys that can hit the ground running? And I'm not sold that that's, that's going to be it. You know, I, I kind of look back and say, hey, man, I kind of like this. Two DPs plus four U22s. I mean, that that's, gets a little exciting. Essentially, um, look at, you know, bringing two senior DPs like a, a Boop and a, and a Costa, and then you bring in like a guy similar to the profile Brenner, who's a little bit younger, but you can spend a bunch of money on him. So I'm interested to see how that shakes out. And I really just think that the MLS needs to be looking at the middle of their roster. I mean, we're hit, we're we're missing versus these Mexican teams in the Cockcaf Champions League, and it's not because we can't bring in more U22 players. It's because we don't have the depth, the solid depth in these rosters. So. I'm not in love with this. I think I, I really don't buy that this is going to be a dramatic change. And I, I just hope that they can kind of figure out different ways to uh, increase more um, spend throughout the whole roster. And now that's kind of where something else comes up is where uh, in current roster rules, and this is a change teams can only like transfer basically 1.2 million bucks of any loan or, or transfer out of the league to, you know, general allocation money. So when we sold Brandon Vasquez, we got 1.2 million bucks in GAM. The, with this summer coming up, you'll be able to actually able to cash that out for like $3 million in GAM. So you'd be able to have a lot, a lot more return when you'd sell on players, which would help us dramatically more build a, a, a replacement for Brandon Vasquez or multiple guys to replace the Brandon Vasquez. Can we use the Brandon point. money? <laughs> I have no idea there, pal. <laughs> I know. I that's, knew the you other, that. that's the other confusing thing about this is does, is it retroactive? If, if we just sold yeah, Brandon. I hope so. I, I hope, <laughs> I hope what we can do is sell Barrial uh, this summer and uh, get, uh, get that to come hit our books. So we'll yeah. see what happens. I think that's really where, um, this will help, ha- this will help, um, you know, Gaga Slonina going out for 10 million bucks, the guy, um, the other four for Chicago, you know, Vasquez, uh, it's tough to replace that level of player without like a DP spot. So being able to have, you know, essentially, you know, two and a half times the amount of money for guys to go out and buy different players. I think that will really help, um, with the, the, the replacement of some of those, uh, key spots on rosters. Another thing that, uh, again, I think this is stupid, but MLS is allowing teams to buy out two players versus one player. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just penalizing crappy spends, so or uh, so rewarding crappy spends. So I, I don't know if I, I, I like that, but yeah, I'm, I'm t- when we had Kenneth Vermeer on the roster, I'd have been fine with that. <laughs> yeah, last year, last year that would have helped, but this year, I mean, what are we gonna do? Sergio Santos and who else? I, I just I don't get it. Bupenza, everybody's just in the car yelling Bupenza, which whatever. <laughs> I think I, that that is just one of those things to help bail out a wooden spoon style team. But yeah, a, a <laughs> club, a club in the top ten rarely actually exercises the one bailout that they have. Yeah. A lot of these owners don't really use their bailouts because it comes out of their pocket. I mean, because they're cheap. Yeah. So you only, only a Carl Linder, Arthur blank, and a few of those owners that really, really care about their legacy and trying to win a championship before they die are going to be cashing (laughs) that out. (laughs) I mean, you laugh, but it's kind of true. (laughs) Oh man. (laughs) Yeah, so, uh, just check out the athletic reporting. Um, I mean, I just think it's a stopgap um, without you know really reshaping you know the collective bargaining agreements, things like that, which we have a lot more time to do in the in the winter. Maybe um, I mean, I'm glad that we're trying to push forward, especially with with uh, Lionel Messi. But I just don't understand why more of this stuff wasn't done this off season. Just a, it's it's a wasted year for the league and it just drives me drives me insane it really does we like i love my the, club but man we had to get the refs back first right oh. that was <laughs> or d1 i don't know uh <laughs> um I'm, so e- i'm so hold on rupesh says it's easy to call someone cheap when it's not your money these guys are making hand over fist their valuations are skyrocketing and i, I there's no excuse there's no excuse to, to not increase your spend dramatically i mean i I call it i I call it owner cheap compared to another owner it's not compared to what i think they should do with their money i get what you're saying i don't Mm -hmm. i don't think i have the right to tell carl under how to use his money but i think that 
certain owners of certain teams have proven that there are a lot of dead owners in this league that are from the old era that have been collecting expansion checks and are not and are not paying it back forward. And they're the ones holding up some of these roster rules at the end of the day. You have an old era league uh, group of owners that would rather just allow three more teams in the league and take the money. And then you have a whole new group of owners that would rather spend to uh, compete with Liga Mekis and, and more. Which side's going to win eventually? I'm not uh, saying that we need to go out and everybody needs to spend $50 million. But having the ability to increase the average roster spend of a team from like 12 to 20 or 25, adding more roster spots, uh, you know, senior roster spots. I mean, come on, guys. It's, it's, it's time. And this is U twenty two. I just think it's stupid. Like I, I like being able to grow the league with young players. But how many? Like I, I heard this take. Like oh, maybe we should go out and spend ten million bucks and on whoever in Brazil or Argentina. Those guys are already identified by these English, these Spanish La Liga clubs. Year well before, well before any MLS can get their eyeballs on them. Our scouting networks are nowhere near. So I think we should be spending, like, yes, if you want to spend money that way with younger players, great. But I think you're going to see the the, the league really thrive. When, and, and it's going to sound stupid. When we have more Pavel Bukas coming into the league, more 23 to 25-year-old players that are maybe not that top level, but that's how you that's how you incrementally grow the league. For every one Tiago Almada, there's 15 or 20 Isaac Atakas. And that's that's a net negative on these clubs. Like we're so far in the net negative in our U22 rosters or transfer spending. It's stupid. Think about how much more quality you could have had with seven or eight seasoned players versus those, you know, Angulo and Natanga. Drives me nuts. <laughs> Sorry. Ran over. No, we're getting in a little bit of off season talk, though, boys. It's uh, not. <laughs> it's changing in the middle of the damn season. What you're, the f? You're not wrong. And uh, <sighs> and I think the clubs that take advantage of it during the summer will get a slight edge. But I, we're I think we're all in agreement here. Are we are we saying that overall we wish the league had just done more? I was. No, expecting- I'm glad it's changing, but it's the wrong changes. So like I was saying, just, hey, I was let's just- throw 20 million bucks down the drain. It's a lottery ticket. It's it's betting. It's going all in with your chips when you get 10 jack unsuited at a casino table versus saying. Hey, I'm going to put 20 bucks and I got Jack Jack. It's stupid. I loved it the idea. Make sense. I loved the idea of a fourth DP spot only because it would reward the owners that want to spend and the ones that don't want to could go still have one to two. And so I think you would see um, clubs like Cincinnati, Miami, Atlanta go get a fourth DP and probably see more but, separation on the table. Have, but if you want to do that, okay, that's that's cool. Being a fourth DP, which these these are these U twenty two spots are those quote unquote DPs. But you're telling teams right. that they have to literally yeah. go spend ten million dollars on a nineteen year old who, yeah, is still a massive coin flip. No, that's what I mean. They're age locked. I don't like that. That's why I like DPs. You can give anybody in the entire world you want. That will come to you. That's your only limit is will they come to Cincinnati? But I like I like the freedom there more. I, I also think and we saw it earlier, I can't remember who it was. Uh 23. You only get 22, 23 or lower. So you can't you can't structure a U twenty two contract past the age of twenty three with that high salary, or else you have problems. So you have to start thinking about DP level at that point. So, like, what if you signed a awesome player and they and they strike twenty four and there's just no way you can keep them? I mean, that, that's the, I don't. There's problems with the U twenty two spot. I, I hope I hope we're successful with it. I hope we do better with it. I'm glad FC Cincinnati has room to move on this. Maybe just maybe the U twenty two spot will bail us out in the summer and we can all say it was worth it. <laughs> and, but uh, otherwise, overall, I would peg my um, changes as suboptimal. I wish there was more. I wish they were better. I wish they were stronger. I want to see I want to see Major League Soccer take decent strides forward in the spending category. 
I'm All right. clueless when it comes to the business side of this. So this has been fun listening in on this. I, I will say this. I like the idea of investing in young players, but I do think you're right that it is a crapshoot. Um, such a crapshoot. It absolutely is. Um, again, I just wonder, I think there's a lot of... Brian, did you touch on the icon player rule or did we skip over that? Because that it's it, has, it won't won't come to the vote till the summer but there is a, a new rule called the icon player where they're trying to keep guys like Carlos Vela, Dimeir Krylock, um the guy uh, uh, Rio Diaz that signed for mm -hmm. Orlando, he was in Seattle. Basically getting guys who've been at your team for 4 or 5 years making a lot of money and mm. it just like their production falls off but you still want them around cuz they're a great locker room guy. Like imagine like Lucio Costa's here for 6 7 years. And at the end of his, you know, he's got another year or two left. And we necessarily can't take a, a million dollar or $1.2 million cap hit on him. Well, you can still keep him around at, you know, a million bucks, but his cap hit's only 200K. So it's incentivizing guys. They've been for like uh, Bedoya. Okay. Bedoya, great. Yeah. You know, great player. But like, you're like, yeah, I really don't want to pay you that much money. <laughs> like, I really do. I really do because, you know, you're a great guy and you sell tickets. But I can't afford you. Well, this is when we've we've gone I, off the freaking deep end with MLS. It's like this is stupid. Just, just that's pay. Boston. That's where I was going. <laughs> just pay a twenty million dollars salary cap, and you. Would we have kept Ledesma, Brian? <laughs> oh man! man. <laughs> when I think Dustin icon Hoyt. player, I think. Manu Ledesma. He wasn't here for four years, boys. <laughs> oh no! But he's an icon. But Nick Haglin. Nick Haglin. Okay, now I know he he doesn't make nearly as much money, but like, like you're almost getting to that point where, um, you know, say he makes 400, 500, I don't, I don't know the whole rule, but if he makes a lot of money, and all of a sudden, hey, we can keep Nick Haglin around for a $200,000 cap hit? Let's do it. Guy's going to pull sword out twice a year. Cool. <laughs> all right. Oh, man. I, I, I think this has been a fun chat. Maybe we should just go three guys more often. Uh, it's been pretty fun bouncing yeah, ideas. Me versus Justin. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. The world can't <laughs> handle it. Uh, I do want to get your final thoughts and get us out of here. We're past the 10 o'clock mark, but so I think it's been a great show. Brian Weigel, we will start with you. I think we're going to tag team this one a little bit here, but yeah. uh, uh, it's that time of the year, guys, where you need to start thinking about what are you going to do this summer for your vacation? What a better way to spend it than the gorgeous sun-soaked location of Cary, North Carolina. Yes, Cary, mm. North Carolina, the soccer tournament. Let's go, Natty SC. Uh, June 5th through 10th. Um, hoping to see a bunch of you guys down in, in Wake Med Soccer Park. I think uh, we have several members of Cincinnati Soccer Talk going and one actually playing Justin Hoyt. So I uh, hope to uh, see a bunch of you guys going down there and supporting our uh, FC Cincinnati alumni. It's very, it, it was like 35 bucks a day, I think, to go or, or over a couple days. So, yeah, I mean, go to support our guys and, and give uh, give us another competitive advantage down there with, uh, with FC Cincinnati sport. Where's his tag team? I'll jump in on that. Um, <laughs> I was doing the tag. ad, man. <laughs> tag me in. Uh, yeah, I bought my tickets yesterday. Um, and I would say it's not time to start thinking about it. It's time to do something about it. Now there's, I'm on the website now there's less than 50 tickets left for the full men's group stage. So they're going quick. I bought them yesterday when they were less than 60 left. So they're going at least 10 a day at this point, if you're buying the whole group stage. So, um, yeah, I'm going. I'm, I'm excited taking my son down there this year. And here's the thing that I'm excited to see, right? We are struggling with our FCC attack. I want to see Chad Ochocinco produce some goals for Natty SC and see if we can sign him this summer to a contract and see what we can do up top. He's got the speed. Well, I don't know if he's got the finishing quality, but nobody else does either, right? Let's see what he's got. I thought you were the Jimmy serious McLaughlin one. McLaughlin does. Brian. Jimmy McLaughlin, <laughs> baby. The disrespect. <laughs> I've always, I've always uh, cherished you for your level-headedness. <laughs> And then you come in here with this Chad Ocasinka starting nonsense. Dude, I cannot wait to see us play um, 
the dude. Uh, oh shoot, what's his name? I'm forgetting it now. Uh, the ESPN guy. Ah. Oh. All of the team. Pat McAfee. Pat oh, McAfee. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the teams this year are getting a little crazy when I saw that announced. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, what are we doing here? There's, a, well, if you think Chad Ochocinco is out of shape, wait till Pat McAfee gets on the pitch. <laughs> Dude's got a boot. He'll be fine. He's a bodybuilder, kind of. He lifts, but I don't think he runs. Can you imagine the first guy <laughs> that like goes studs up into Pat McAfee? That dude will get murdered on TikTok and everywhere else. <laughs> Poor guy. It is. The, I tell you what, this tournament is getting pretty good at uh, marketing itself and getting the names to make the make it blow up. Uh, I don't know who the organizer is. I know uh, the Natty SC guys know him pretty well, but. Uh, props, props to the marketing. You're doing a better job than most of American soccer at getting your tournament's name out there. So I will, I will give them a shout out for that. I mean, I they think, figured out a way to make it fun. I think we need to do a huge Airbnb in 2025. So we'll do. Instead of a bus, we'll just have a party zone. I can be convinced. There we go. Donate yeah. on Patreon to Cincinnati Soccer <laughs> Dog. Ten dollar level gets you into the house for the soccer <laughs> tournament. <laughs> that's creepy that is yeah well, that might have worked when we were 20 um, it, do we know the full hair. roster yet of natty sc i know it's no, coming so. um jimmy's not even on listed on the website i think he was i thought he was playing i thought he was, um, he was playing. yeah he's not listed kenny walker's new today what? uh listed on there but i'd be um, shocked i'd be shocked i would be too i thought he was one of the first ones there but I, don't, I want to play Wrexham Dan, and take them out. That's what I want to do. So Danny actually, Koenig is listed twice. Sorry about that, Brian. We got two uh, Danny Koenigs playing. That's you probably two Danny Koenigs. <laughs> that's probably your Look problem. It. One of those is supposed to be Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, actually, Manu Ledesma is going to be on there. Yeah, yeah, actually, Jimmy did pretty well last year. I, I mm -hmm. actually would not. He's think our best player. Team, yeah, I would. I would definitely think the team's in worse shape without uh, McLaughlin. McLaughlin seems to still have kept match fitness of some sorts. Kadeem Dakers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. That's all I got to say. Derek Luke. <laughs> Derek Luke was, I can't, I can't hate too much on anybody, but I can't think of another person who just like hate, like everybody was so bought into like being there, like all the former players, like at our foot golf tournament. And Derek Luke's like, I just want to get out of here. Dude, I'm, did, did you guys, did you guys even know <laughs> the name of Derek Luke right there? Did you notice that the assistant coach is, is the beyond exercise guy? He is. I yes. saw that. Yeah. Yes. I just noticed I see that. that. I yeah. All right. Well, now I have to love this turn, this team, and this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Chad Johnson, baby. Shout out, Eric. We appreciate you. All right. Um, I want to give a uh, another shout out to everybody that does support our Patreon. Uh, we are not uh, having a house at uh, next year's TST <laughs> tournament. I'm sorry. Sure, we are. <laughs> <laughs> but you if don't you get that, if we're a, we're a, we're we're not a what do you call it monarchy around here. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, I get my way a lot. Brian Weigel will be paying for his own hotel. <laughs> I just want to make that. I, just I would do this that. Right while the rest of us stay in the CST house. Oh my God. I'm telling you, I would do this right now if it wasn't over the weekend of my um, uh, 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 cousin's wedding. Sorry, that week. Yeah. Now, anyway. if you, it, I tell you what, yes. if both of you told me you were going, I would go. I would, I would I wouldn't have a choice. I, I would maybe have I'll to do the first two days. Yeah. So you guys can push me into this. I'm just putting that out there. All right. And so I do want to give a shout out to everybody who supports us over there. I don't have the list pulled up, so that's my mistake. But um, we are over 10 minutes anyway. But uh, you know you are. and We appreciate you. I'll read you guys out next week. Shout out um, to everyone who keeps CST running for free. Uh, you allow everybody to go to the website and read stories and listen to three podcasts a week because of your generous support. And uh, that doesn't go unnoticed. So we really do appreciate it. Um, that's it for this week. We want to see you next week and hopefully another big FC Cincinnati win. Peace out.